The Princess and the Warrior, A Tale of Two Volcanoes. Once upon a time, there lived a kind and beautiful princess named Itza. Even though she was the daughter of an emperor, she loved to spend time with the people who grew corn in the milpas. She liked to teach them poetry or floor y canto. There she is singing. Suitors traveled from distant lands to woo her. They presented her with rare and lavish gifts, such as Quetzal feathers and turquoise necklaces. They would all say the same thing. You are the most beautiful maiden in all the land. Marry me, princess, and you will live in the, my luxurious palace. You won't have to spend time in the fields ever again. No, thank you, Isa would reply. She was not interested in any of the suitors or their gifts. One day, a warrior named Popoka came to see her. Princess, I know you have a kind and beautiful heart, for I have seen you teaching Flori Ganto to the villagers in the Milpas. I don't have expensive gifts to offer, but if you marry me, I promise that I will love you for who you are. I will stay by your side no matter what, as long as... Do not do rises as long as the senosa the bird sings. Popoca's words were music to Itza's ears. She could hear the honesty in his voice and fell in love with him. The emperor did not want his daughter to marry a mere soldier. He wanted her to marry a wealthy and powerful that La Toni, a ruler, but he knew that Popoca was the bravest and best warrior in his kingdom. The emperor and his people had been at war with Jaguar Claw, the, the La Toni of neighboring land, for years, and there seemed to be no end in sight. He called Popoca to him. Popoca, the emperor said, if you defeat the Jaguar Claw once and for all, I will let you marry my daughter, Itza. Popoca and Itza were overjoyed. Popoca gathered his most courageous men and marched to war. Popoca fought numerous battles. He and his men were injured and almost defeated many times. But when the and seemed near, Popoca would always think of Itza, waiting for his return. He would defend himself with his chimali, attacked with his machahuitil, and inspire his men to fight with even more courage than before. Slowly, the tide overturned, and Popoca and his men began winning battles. It was clear that they would soon defeat Jaguar Claw. Realizing this, Jaguar's Claw devised a plan to steal from Popoca what the warrior cherished the most. He bribed one of Popoca's personal messengers, tell Itza that Popoca has been killed, and offer her this potion, Okutil, to soothe her grief. Everything is lost, princess, the messenger said sadly when he arrived at the palace. But Boca and his men fought bravely, but they were defeated and killed. No, that can't be, cried Itza. She looked, locked herself in the chamber and wept, and refused to eat or speak with anyone. That night, the messenger came to her room. I know your heart is shattered, as if it were to be of obsidian glass, he said, but take this drink, princess, it will help ease your grief. Itza took the potion and drank it all. Lying down on her petala, she fell into a deep sleep.
The next day, before night fell, in the first, Sidali appeared in the sky, but Boca defeated Jaguar Claw. Unaware of the lies the messenger had told, the great warrior and his troop marched back to the palace in triumph, ready to share the good news with the princess and the emperor. But when they arrived, they were met with disbelief. Popoka, said the emperor, one of your messengers told us that you were dead. Itza was heartbroken. She took a special octil to ease her pain, and now we cannot wake her. This can't be true, said Popoka. Itza, my beautiful princess, has to awaken. He ran to her chamber. He kissed her and held her in her arms. He called her out her name over and over but Itza did not wake up. Cool air will surely revive her, Boboka told the emperor. He carried Itza through the thrill of the villagers who wept as they passed, passed the milpas and all through the night the top of the tepil. He laid her on the Huachil bed, he knelt down beside her. The cool mountain air soon turned to snow, but still the princess did not wake up. Popoka refused to move. He stayed next to Itza, just as he had promised when he first met her. As long as Tunatu rises, as long as the Cerlo Senso tell bird sings. In time, where once there was a princess with her true love by her side, two volcanoes emerged. One is known as Itzakutil, or Sleeping Woman. The other one is known as Popocatepel, or Smoky Mountain. Itzatusil continues to sleep, but Popocatepel spews ashes and smoke from time to time, as is attempting to wake his sleeping princess. So here she's sleeping, there he's throwing out ashes. Thank you for reading with me. Until next time.